Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. This is my eighth March of Remembrance, and I am always amazed. But this is my story. I was helped and am here because of Righteous Gentile, or the way we call now, Righteous Among the Nation. The ballet you showed us just before was to represent Kristallnacht, the night of the broken crystal, the night that changed my life forever. Because the Nazis came into my home, destroyed everything, and took my father and grandfather to the first internment camp. It was called Dachau. It later became a death camp. It was created for the German people who didn't want to be Nazis, and now the Jews. Short time later, October 1940, all the Jews were rounded up again. My father somehow made it home, and we were sent to a jail to await the, the trucks to take us to the train, the box cars, and we wound up in southwest France, the border of Spain, a camp called Camp de Gurs, G-U-R-S. There were 34 camps in France. I only have a few minutes, so I just want to tell you, read to you something that Ellie Wiesel wrote, and it means a lot to us here and to all of us in the future. In the dark years of World War II, there was darkness everywhere, in heaven and on earth. All the gates of compassion seemed to have been closed. The killers killed and the Jews died, and the outside world adopted an attitude of either of complicity on indifference, only a few had the courage to care. These few righteous men and women were poor and weak and vulnerable and afraid and helpless. What then made them different from their fellow citizens? What compelled them to disregard danger and torture and choose humanity? What moved them to put their own lives in jeopardy for the sake of saving one Jewish child, one Jewish mother? And above all, why were there so few? Was it that perilous to oppose evil? Was it really impossible to help? Was it really impossible to resist, organize, systemize, legalized cruelty and murder by showing concern for the victims. For one victim? For it is our profound belief that in remembering the Holocaust, we must not be numbed by the magnitude of its horrors. We must allow ourselves to be moved by the humanity the victims succeeded in preserving at all times and we humbly and gratefully look at these few individuals who out of their religious belief or their humanistic education with a simple gesture, often acting on impulse, became our protector, better yet our allies. Each and every one of them is a reminder of what so many others could have done of what so many others have not done. So this is what I would like to leave with you. I lost my whole family. We came to Houston in 1948, and two beautiful gentlemen came to the train station to pick my sister and I up. My sister was just a year older than me. I was 14, she was 15. 
and a gentleman by the name of Wolf Finkelman and his friend, Leon Cooper, came to the train station. We were scared. We didn't know. Men to us meant problems. And yet, they were so kind and so wonderful. And here in this audience is the son of Wolf Finkelman. His name is Steve Finkelman. And I would like to introduce you now to our rescuer's son, Steve Finkelman.